Well, good morning, everyone. Today, let us discuss what is new criticism. Now, new criticism was a twentieth century literary movement. It is mainly focused on poetry, and it is basically a mo- American movement. Most of the critics belong to America. Now, it is mostly focused on form. It is a formalistic movement. It was influenced by Russian formalism. it uh, simply says that to analyze any piece of uh, literature we need to focus on the form of the work we need to focus on the language of the work it is merely the text which a critic should focus on nothing else now this was against the old school of history which said that a critic should focused on uh, the context in which the text was written or what was the historical background of the text but uh, this new criticism school rejected all that uh, old school of history some of the famous critics of the new criticism include I. A. Richards, T. S. Eliot, William Elson, John Crewe Ransom. Now, John Crewe Ransom, in his book *The New Criticism*, it was a book published in nineteen forty-one. The term "new criticism" was coined from uh, this uh, book. Now, what were the values changed by the new criticism? It said that poetry is merely a tool to express all the feelings. it is unequal to science and philosophy but it is it isn't anyhow less than science and philosophy they wanted to give a scientific look to poetry they said that uh, uh, the use of uh, multiple techniques figurative language rhyme meter metaphor and symbol all these are essential components of poetry uh, these components makes poetry as important as science now the joy of poetry lie in the unreserved tensions now these unreserved tensions means that poetry shouldn't be read uh, by writing it uh, uh, its meaning in uh, prose poetry should be read in its original form and its unreserved tensions should uh, be read in the raw form now there are two important terms uh, which are important in the new criticism these are intentional policy and affective policy now these terms were coined in an essay in a book these uh, intentional policy and affective policy are uh, essays in a book uh, which is titled the verbal icon Uh, Cologne Studies in the Meaning of Poetry is was published in 1954 it is a book by Monroe Beardsley and W K Wimsett in this book two essays were there uh, which are really important which are intentional policy and affective policy intentional policy means to say that uh, to analyze a work don't uh, try to figure out the intentions of the authors just focus on the text don't leave the real essence of the poetry behind and for uh, try to figure out the intentions of the author don't bother about that now in affective policy it says that uh, uh, a critic should not uh, focus uh, that uh, what is the impact or uh, what is uh, the effect felt by the reader Uh, owing to the work or the piece of art which is being analyzed don't focus on that just focus on the text and leave the response of the readers behind yeah. now this is affective policy policy means wrong so they say that uh, trying to figure out the author's intention or trying to figure out uh, uh, the readers uh, uh, response both are wrong these are important components of new criticism now let us discuss some of uh, the major critics of this uh, uh, new criticism let us start from richard i richards 
his some of his famous uh, books or works include principles of literary criticism or practical criticism in 1929 and philosophy of rhetoric and alongside um, C.K. Ogden, uh, C.K. Ogden and I.A. Richards in combination published Foundation of Aesthetics and Meaning of Meanings, these extra works. Now, let us discuss some of the important uh, concepts given by I.A. Richards. He said that uh, there are four factors which are important for poetry. These include sense, feeling, tone and intention. Now, sense is what is said, feeling is what is the emotion behind uh, the said thing. Now, tone is what is the attitude in what way the thing is being stated. Now, intention is what is the aim of stating that thing. Ah. Now, the second thing, important thing stated by I.R. Richards is uh, the pseudo statement. He said, uh, uh, similar to Plato that uh, poetic language is not verifiable it is ex it explains only the feelings as similarly the Plato stated that the poets are fake persons and uh, they paint a fake picture of life and all that that is the similar thing now the third important concept by I.A. Richards is semantic triangle it was well, this concept was published in his book uh, the meaning of meaning which was published uh, which was penned with C.K. Ogden in 1923 now this triangle is tri this triangle has three edges which are reference that is the subject referent that is the object and symbol that is sign so reference is the realm of memory where the past is recollected now the referent is the object which is being remembered now the symbol is a word which create the object from difference so this is the concept of semantic triangle uh, by i.a richards now the fourth concept by i.a richards is feed forward it uh, relates to um, the concept of uh, feedback as what does feedback mean feedback means uh, to give the criticism of anything now imagine that criticism forward uh, before your action and uh, change change or correct your action according to that imaginary feedback now this is feed forward let us discuss the second important critique. Let us take uh, Clint Brooks. Now, Clint Brooks, uh, he is famous uh, for his work, uh, which is uh, The Well Wrote On, which was published in 1947, the same year uh, in which India got independence and his uh, other work include The Modern Poetry and Tradition, which was published in 1939. Uh, and uh, he was a friend of Penn Warren uh, alongside uh, Clint Brooks and Penn Warren published in combination published understanding uh, poetry and uh, understanding fiction these two different works now let us discuss some of the important concepts given by Clint Brooks he, first of all he gave the concept of heresy of paraphrase now many a times you have seen uh, that uh, a poetry has a distinct form than a prose some many times people try to paraphrase the poetry uh, they try to write down the main uh, things stated in the poetry in the prose form now clint brook said that it is a wrong notion heresy means a wrong notion so he said uh, that uh, attempting to paraphrase a poem is a wrong notion because as you paraphrase it you leave many things behind you simply write uh, that what is being said in the poem but what about the metaphors what about uh, uh, the figurative language that is used in the poetry you can't uh, copy that in the prose 
so this is heresy of paraphrase wrong notion that the poetry can be paraphrased or can be written in prose form poetry has a unique figurative language which can't be copied now a very important quotation by clint brook is that uh, a poetry is a simulacrum of reality an experience rather than any mere statement about experience it means that a poetry is a unique thing and very close to life also he gave uh, the concept of uh, two types of irony that is verbal and uh, dramatic verbal is uh, the irony in the auditory statements and the dramatic irony means that um, audience knows what is going to happen but the character is unaware what storm is coming and he is uh, still fooling around now this is dramatic irony now as i have earlier already discussed intentional and effective policy uh, these are the titles of two essays in the book the verbal icon studies in meaning of poetry which was penned by w k wimsett and alongside his friend monroe birdsley it was published in 1954 now wimsett also gave another concept that is called concrete universal he said that uh, now in the theory of in uh, in the theory of con- the concrete universal wimsett attempts to determine how specific or general that is concrete or universal a verbal representation must be in order to achieve a particular effect what is the difference for example between uh, referring to a purple cow and a tan cow with a broken horn in addressing such questions wimsett attempts to resolve what is uh, it uh, that makes poetry different from other po- forms of communication concluding that what distinguishing distinguishes poetry from scientific or logical discourses is a degree of concreteness which does not contribute anything to the argument but is somehow enjoyable or valuable for its own sake for wimsett poetry is the vehicle of a metaphor which one boards heedless of where it runs whether cross town or down town just for the sake of the right now let us discuss next critic that is uh, alan tate his full name was john ole alan tate he gave uh, the important theory of tension he said uh, that uh, uh, tension is important for poetry he said uh, these tensions may be of two type that is extension and intention extension means the denotative meaning of the poetry and intention means the connotative meaning of the poetry these both kind of meanings are an essential component of poetry now let us discuss the last critic let us take him to be t s elit he was uh, an important critic of the 20th century his uh, works include tradition and individual talent published in 1920 hamlet and his problems published in 1920 and uh, uh, the metaphysical poets published in 1922 the use of poetry and the use of criticism published in 1933 after strange scots published in 1934 the voices of poetry published in 1954 the frontiers of criticism published in 1956 now these were some of the important works by ps elliot let us discuss the important theories or the important concepts given by ts elliot let us discuss the first one of them uh, autotelic text it means uh, that uh, a text which is self dependent or which is self contained there is no need for writer or the context there is no need to know who wrote it there is no need to know when it was written uh, just uh, study the 
text uh, completely including its metaphors ironies and all its tension and that will suffice now this was the concept of autotelic text the second concept is theory of impersonality now eliot said uh, that uh, the poet uh, has no personality of his own his own personality is submerged his own feelings and experiences are all submerged into the personality and feelings of the subject of his poetry now this was the theory of impersonality it is uh, somewhat similar to the theory of negative capability that uh, the writer is a mere medium or a mere catalyst who remains totally unchanged but gives expression to the experience uh, in the story of impersonality uh, uh, t s eliot rejected the romanticism or the romantic moment he said that uh, poetry is an escape from emotion poetry is an impersonal tool now the next concept is objective correlative it was um, this concept was uh, found uh, uh, was um, explained by t s eliot in uh, his uh, book the hamlet and his problems published in 1922 now he said that uh, uh, there must be a objective correlative so that uh, the audience or uh, the reader can relate to the emotions of the character he said uh, that an objective correlative may be a chain of events or a scenario or an ambience or an atmosphere created by the writer to tell the real feeling of the character now this objective relative is lacking in hamlet uh, which uh, made the hamlet the artistic failure according to t.s eliot but uh, it is found in t.s uh, king lear so it is uh, an artistic success according to t.s eliot now that's all for new criticism in conclusion i would like to say that uh, new criticism was an literary movement it was mainly an american movement as it is composed of mainly american critics and it is a formalistic movement it means that focus on the text and text only thank you